good afternoon viewers <coughs> in the previous slides we have been previous videos we have been discussing about form measurement fundamentals of form measurements threading measurements gauge measurements and applications of those threading measuring instruments all those things we have been discussing in the previous videos now in the present video we are going to discuss about gear terminology gear measuring straightness measuring parallelism measuring and their ad advantages and applications of those measuring instruments and measuring technology if you look at this slide this is a straightness measurement we are thinking that whatever we are training from the lathe or from the milling or from any machine tool will be of good straightness but if you look at the workpiece it looks like a straightness but actually it may have some errors the profile may be slightly up and down if the up and down may be of 0.001 mm that is 1 micron it's not of much but if you look through the measuring instrument as we are seeing here that is stylus we are having that will move up and down and it will be connected to the another device that will give you the reading so that is we can draw the graph as we are seeing the resultant profile this is called straightness measurement Similarly, say, look at this parallelism. It is a single side parallelism. In the next slide, we will be seeing double side. Here also, by using the stylus, we are moving up and down, and we are checking that it is not parallel. The error is the spindle axis and the outermost <coughs> contour layer, that is circumferential contour layer, is uh, different by one or two degrees. So that can also be measured by using this method. This is double side we are measuring of cylinder and we are finding that the error in a circumferential error. So the parallelism is not there. Even for cylinders we have this much error. If you are going to make the gears with the manufacturing of gear tooth, gear harbor by using the machine called the gear harbor or in Shapro also we can do. Mostly we will be doing the gear hopping machine to generate the gear teeth. For making the cylinder itself, we have found the straightness and the parallelism. Some minor error. Look at the formula for finding the parallelism D1 minus D2. Maximum error minus minimum that gives the parallelism error. That is, parallelism is not perfect. It may be of 0 0.001, that is uh, 1 micron. But that is negligible if it is within the tolerance limit. Even for cylindrical rod, we are measuring the parallelism and the straightness. Why don't we measure for gear? That is the question arises. That's why we have gone for gear, teeth, measuring and checking the terminology of gear, gears. Mostly we will be discussing about as per gear. See now look at this pitch measurement. As we have seen in the thread, here also we have the pitch. We are having pitch measuring machine, tool maker's microscope and the school pitch gauge in condition of the threaded. So this is called the pitch measuring machine. Now look at this. The for thread, I am putting this for thread. Similarly, we will be having for gear also. The stylus, this part is a stylus. This part is known as a stylus. This is pointer, this is a cartridge, carriage, and a spring loader head. Traditional indicator that is, <coughs> and this is micrometer. This is screw thread. By means of stylus, we are measuring the reading. This pointer will move, it will like a deflect. This is called pitch measuring machine. Another one is a tool maker's microscope. Workpiece is placed on the base of the instrument. The optical head is mounted on a vertical column. It can be moved up and down. Likewise, like a microscope. Workpiece is mounted on a, gas, a glass plate. A light source provides horizontal beam of light, which is reflected from a mirror by 90 degree upwards towards the table. So now look at this picture. You will understand how the tool maker's microscope will be looking. This optical head. 
This is called optical head. This is a table. This is a micrometer screw for logical movement of the table. This is a micrometer screw for lateral movement. This is for lateral movement. This screw for longitudinal movement. This one is a supporting column. This is a clamp screw. It uh, looks very similar to the shaping machine. But it is very similar to microscope, tool maker's microscope. Say so now in the next slide also we are looking at the different view, picture view. From here we will be looking at this. And here we will be have the reflector and mirror. Through this reflector mirror, the rays will be falling on the object. There is object what we are going to measure. Here we have the mirror. Here we have the collimeter lens. This is a hollow base that is different. That is a column hollow base or the measure for things. That is not uh, uh, directly related with the tool microscope. That is the uh, <coughs> robust machining uh, purpose. That is for uh, uh, holding the work pieces, we have some robust arrangement. That's all. This is the optical head. It is also working in similar way of auto collimeter. The collimeter lens will uh, parallel the beams. From the lamp, the rays are falling on the mirror. From mirror, it gets reflected. And through the my, uh, another reflector, we are viewing through the eyepiece. Then we will do the calculation and we will find the pitch. See here, look at this toolmaker's microscope, how it is going to work. The application is applications are. To measure the linear measurements, measurement of pitch of the screw, measurement of pitch diameter, measurement of thread angle, compare thread forms, center to center distance measurement. For all these things, we can have this form of tool microscope, tool maker's microscope. Now look at this. This is a screw pitch gauge. Here we are having the pitch like a threaded. So by using this, we can easily measure the pitch of the screw. Here they have put the mark, 19G, 20G likewise. Flank angle measurement, thread, see, this is gear measurement, a spur gear, helical gear, racket gear. These are the known things. Here it is a, sp a spur gear. <coughs> if the teeth is parallel to axis of rotation, it is called a spur gear. If the teeth is inclined into the axis of rotation, it will be called helical gear. The gears are used to transfer power from one shaft to another parallel shaft. If you want to transfer the power to the perpendicular shaft, we will be using bevel gears. Mostly the gears are used in electrical, electric screwdriver, acid sprinkler, wind up, wind up all of plug, washing machine and other domestic usages. This, as I have told, helical gear which is having inclined teeth. This is teeth is inclined but parallel to each teeth. This is for power transmission. It is better than a spur gear since the angle of contact and the contact surface is more in the case of helical gear. This is a rack and pinion arrangement to convert the rotary motion into linear motion. Look at this uh, uh, animation. The steering system in cars. Okay. This is a straight and bevel gear for power transmission through 90 degree. This is the terminology of a spur gear. So with this I will stop and we will go to the 